The scapulothoracic joint is not a true joint, but describes the articulation between the shoulder blade or scapula with the chest wall and plays an integral part in total shoulder movement. In the normal situation, the glenohumeral joint accounts for about 120 degrees of shoulder movement, but the scapulothoracic joint is able to move the scapula and so the glenohumeral joint an additional 60 degrees. The components of the scapulothoracic joint are the scapula and its connection to the sternum through the AC joint, clavicle and sternoclavicular joint. Movement of the joint is obtained by a coordinated sequence of clavicle elevation and posterior rotation with scapular protraction and upwards rotation. Breaking this movement down into its component parts, the sternoclavicular joint allows for 45 degrees of elevation and 5 degrees of depression and the AC joint 5 degrees of elevation and depression. On this animation, where there is already maximal abduction of the glenohumeral joint to 120 degrees, movement at the SC joint and AC joint allows the initial clavicle elevation. The SC joint also allows 35 degrees of protraction and retraction. On the animation, we can see that protraction moves the scapula forwards and slightly rotates it upwards. The SCJ also allows 40 degrees of anterior and posterior rotation and the AC joint 5 degrees. Posterior rotation at the clavicle allows the scapula to rotate further, obtaining maximal elevation of the shoulder. In the full animation, we can see elevation of the clavicle, protraction of the scapula, and then posterior rotation of the clavicle, obtaining maximal elevation of the shoulder joint. So far, I've described the movements of the scapulothoracic joint in their component parts. However, in real life, this is not a linear sequence. In fact, the first 30 degrees of abduction is purely done at the glenohumeral joint, and the next 150 degrees is a combination of the scapulothoracic joint and the glenohumeral joint working together, sometimes known as the scapulohumeral rhythm. There's normally a ratio of 2 to 1, but this can vary greatly between patients. The muscles that move the scapula and the scapulothoracic joint insert around the scapula circumferentially and work in a coordinated fashion. The trapezius is involved in upwards rotation and deep to trapezius, levator scapulae and the rhomboid minor and major muscles involved in both upwards rotation and also retraction of the scapula. Anteriorly, serratus anterior and to a lesser extent petrolis minor are involved in protraction of the scapula. Putting all of these components together, the scapula, AC joint, clavicle and SC joint and the surrounding muscles go together to form the scapulothoracic joint or articulation which plays an important part in shoulder movement. If you'd like to see more videos on the scapula or any other aspects of shoulder surgery, visit my YouTube channel Cambridge Shoulder or my website cambridgeshoulder.co.uk.